never seen this before. I get to watch it. I learned that on my iPad, I can't put a background picture or anything. That's You're live. Okay. Thank you. Now that we are live, I will call this meeting to order. Uh, I, all members of council are present. Is there any, does anyone have a disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none, would you read the motion on the minutes, please? Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Road, that the minutes of the regular planning meeting of council dated Monday, April the 26th, 2021 be adopted. Any questions? If not, would you call the vote? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? She said yes, but we... Yes. <laughs> Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. We have no delegations or no correspondence for action. The five items for uh, information, is there anyone you want to take out of there for a special consideration? If not, we'll have the motion to take them all together. The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Krevitz, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that correspondence items number one through number five inclusive be received as information and filed. Would you call the vote? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. And I, I do think we want to commend staff on we're getting the blue flag status again, um, which was in there. And also, as you noted, the other councils have now all agreed to keep the police services board in the same format as it was. Okay, moving on to Director of Infrastructure and Community Services. Um, first report is on Crestview Court Stormwater Management Facility. Jeff, do you have anything to add? If not, it, uh, the one thing I would ask, do, uh, you've all read the report. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about it? Councillor Fair. I just wondered when it's decommissioned, uh, does that mean that there will be a property there that will be available to sell or anything? Mr. Brooks? Through you, Madam Mayor, the property in question here is very small, so it wouldn't entail a building lot. Uh, and I would suggest it wouldn't provide much of a benefit to anyone other than the adjacent landowner is that uh, if you wouldn't know any better, it would be just appear to be a small portion of his backyard. So um, th there wouldn't be a whole lot of value in, in this piece of property. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Brooks? If not, would you read the motion, please? Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Rose, seconded by Councillor Krevitz, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Oregon direct staff to complete the decommissioning of the Crestview Court Stormwater Management Facility, and that Council direct staff to dispose of the municipally owned property associated with the Crestview Court Stormwater Management Facility post decommissioning as per report ICS 1521. Thank you. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. The next one is the uh, resurfacing program, and Jeff has listed for us all the different ones, the, the roads, et cetera, and what is going to be happening with each of them. Does anyone have any questions for him? If not, I will ask for the motion, please. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Wynn, seconded by Councillor Krebitz, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Island receive report ICS 1721-2021 resurfacing program as information. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. 
The next one is the solid waste level of service options. Um, and you have seen the report. I'm delighted to see the report personally, um, having had some serious concerns about Prospect Street in particular. And so I would like, um, there is a, a proposal or um, we just need to know which option you would like um, to pursue. So if anyone would like to speak on the option they're preferring or ask any questions you want to ask of Mr. Brooks concerning this one. Councillor Rowe and then Councillor Wynn. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would just uh, vote for option 3B. The uh, questions that I had around that particular option or number three in general were just why is it $2.73 for A and B? But if you do do the math, just so that anyone listening is that the price of the vehicle is a little bit different. The operating costs are lower with B and one is over seven years and one is over eight years. So mathematically, it does actually coincidentally come out to the same amount, but uh, 3B would be my choice. Thank you. Councillor Wynn. Uh, thank you. I am leaning towards um, option 3B as well. I guess the only question I had looking at the um, spec sheet we got, we received, um, this, this unit on the pickup, it allows for pickup and separation of both garbage and recyclables. Mr. Brooks? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, no, it does not uh, allow for uh, recycling and solid waste. Uh, it's important to note this council report only outlines costs associated with the collection of solid waste and the solid waste cart program. To follow up? Go ahead. So the, so the same system that is in place now for recyclables just continues as usual then. And then this truck and unit on it would take over the waste removal. That's what's being proposed. It's uh, council's decision on the level of service that it would wish to provide uh, recycling. We do collect the recycling uh, boxes now and bring them up to the top of, uh, um, for instance, on Prospect, we do bring the recycling uh, boxes up to Maple and Prospect for collection. And if it's council's wish, we'll continue to do so. But that cost wouldn't be built into um, the solid waste program or the user fees that would be paid separately through the general taxes and the recycling funds. Mr. Brooks, I believe all recycling is paid through the general taxes, correct? Until the province does whatever they're going to do with it. That is correct. We do pay for all the recycling. Well, I should, I should correct myself. We pay uh, some of the recycling costs. We do get... Um, a grant from Stewardship Ontario to provide the service, but we we pick up the extra costs that uh, aren't provided through the grants. Thank you, and we also earn some money back from the recyclable material to help offset that. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, we have two people going for three B. Yeah, Mr. C Councilor Kravitz, sorry. Uh, just going um, piggyback on Councillor Wynn's comment, the cost for the recycling, so that's over and above the cost of the garbage pickup for this area still, we're going to still have to send a separate truck down here in that prospect area and another area to pick up the recycling bins and the additional cost, how is that recovered, that additional cost? So if, if council wishes to continue the level of service with the recycling, that cost would be picked up through the general taxes. Uh, in this report, as I said, I've only outlined the uh, cost implications that would go to the user fees. So- Councilor Kravitz, everybody is already, like everyone's recycling is paid through, through the taxes at this time. Okay. Councillor Fair? I looked at the report and 
I didn't uh, expect something as nice as this coming back. Uh, that, that was a pretty uh, in-depth job you did, Jeff, and I think I think it's very good uh, and uh, it, it addresses the problem uh, very equitably. And and I also support option three B. And I like the idea that hopefully they can use the truck for other things as well. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yeah, I I certainly support three um, B. I uh, have always been a big fan. The the this change has got a solid business plan, and I this is, have to applaud staff for ironing out the wrinkles. Uh, good job, and I, I'm happy to support 3B. Thank you. I, it sounds like we have a consensus, unless Karen has something else she wishes to stay. If not, I'm going to ask Diane to read a motion. Do you have a, I'm sorry, someone else wish to speak? Oh, I, I was just going to um, give my support for option 3B as well. Oh, thank you, Councillor Kravitz. Okay. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Island receive report ICS 1821 solid waste whole areas as information. And the Council directs staff to proceed with option 3B, automated collection pickup trucks as per said report. Thank you. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Now we're moving on to the Director of Financial Services, Treasurer's Reports. And the first one is the Grauberg Drain. Uh, it's there for the request for tenders, et cetera, and the awarding of the contract. Anyone have any questions? If not, would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Wynn, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Central Ogden accept the tender of Robinson Farm Drainage Limited for tender 2021-08 Grauberg Drain in the amount of $146,065 plus all applicable taxes as per report DFS 0921. My apologies. It's good. All right. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. And now the supply, delivery, and placement of aggregates. Any questions on the report? If not, would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Wynn, seconded by Councillor Kravitz, that the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Central Algon accept the tender of AROC Aggregates Limited for 2021-05 supply, delivery, and placement of aggregates at an estimated annual amount of $141,965.40, plus all applicable taxes as per report DFS 1021. Thank you. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook. Yes. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Councillor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. Councillor Rowe. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. And now um, our uh, Director of Finance has provided us with the first quarter uh, variance report that I, you've all had a chance to read. I was delighted to see it. I very much appreciate this. It helps us keep on track so that we know where we're going. Does anyone have any questions about any item on it? Councillor Fair. I don't have a question. I just want to say that it's nice to see a good report like that for once. Thank you. We appreciate your report. Our right, Jana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, we kind of promise that we will keep providing this on quarterly basis going forward. Thank you. We very much appreciate it. Would you uh, read the motion, please? Mm -hmm. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that report DFS 1121 regarding 2021 first quarter Q1 variance report be received for information. Call the vote. Councillor Cook.
Councillor Cook? Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. And the next one I appreciate as well, the de development charges annual continuity statement. Does anyone have any questions on this one? Seeing none, would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Krebitz, seconded by Councillor Wynn, that report DFS 1221 regarding development charges annual continuity statement be received for information. Call the vote, please. Councillor Cook. Councillor Cook. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. Councillor Rowe. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. We now have uh, the next financial report, which is the water wastewater budget. I assume everyone's had a chance to look it over carefully. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that report DFS 1321 regarding 2021 water and wastewater budget be received for information, and that staff be directed to bring forward a bylaw for Council's consideration to approve and adopt the 2021 water and wastewater budget. Thank you. Call the vote. Councillor Cook. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Next, uh, I, uh, sorry, item is the surface treatment uh, tender. So you've had a chance to look at that one. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? Being none, go ahead and call the mo or read the motion, please. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Krevitz, Krevitz, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Central Algon accept the tender of Duncor Enterprises, Inc. for surface treatment in the amount of $285,069.56, plus all applicable taxes as per report DFS 1421. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Councillor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. Councillor Rowe. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. The resolution carries. And the final one under Director of Finance is the uh, hot mix paving. You've seen the report and the tender and who's uh, the one that they're recommending. Any questions? If not, would you call the, or read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Wynn, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Island accept the tender of Cocoa Paving, Inc. for 2021-06 hot mix paving for 2021 in the amount of $494,000, plus all applicable taxes, as per report DFS 1521. Call the vote, please. Councillor Cook. Yes. Councillor Kravitz. Yes. Councillor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. Councillor Rowe. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. And now we're moving to the one report from the Director of Fire Rescue Services, uh, the monthly alarm activity report. Are there any questions? Good. I don't think we have the fire chief on at the moment, so that would be helpful. Would you read the motion, please? Yeah, the motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Municipality of Centre Alvin receive report FS0521 regarding monthly activities report for April of 2021 as information. Call the vote, please. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. 
And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. And now under the Director of Asset Management and Development Services, the monthly building report. Does anyone have any questions on that? Seeing, seeing none, we're still continuing obviously to do a lot of building. So would you uh, read the motion, please? Yes, Madam Mayor, the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Kravitz, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Island receive report AMDS 1921, April 2021 monthly building report as information. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Now to the asset management of the bridges and culverts, detailed asset management plan. Um, I was, this is a very detailed plan. Um, I didn't, I was going to ask Mr. Perrin to just speak to one aspect and that is that we're not approving any spending at this point. He can explain it better, but uh, this is the actual plan that we're hoping to adopt. So Mr. Uh, Perrin. Uh, th thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, what staff are suggesting is uh, Council uh, accept and approve the uh, detailed asset management plan, plan for bridges and culverts. What you are not committing to at this point, though, are funding uh, of the program. Uh, it would not be responsible for staff to ask uh, Council to accept any uh, recommendations with respect to funding uh, for just one of the detailed asset management plans. Uh, we're suggesting that you accept the report and then funding levels will be identified or options identified for council to consider uh, once all the uh, detailed asset management plans are in place because that will give you a better picture about overall funding required for capital assets for the tax supported um, infrastructure that the municipality has being in this case roads and bridges um, and storm sewers. Uh, so. Yeah, bridges and culverts uh, before you tonight. Uh, prior to uh, the end of July, you'll have in front of you uh, as well the storm uh, sewer uh, detailed asset management plan as well as the roads detailed asset management plan. So at that point, staff will know where the overall funding is required uh, on an aggregate basis and we can report back to you with funding options. Thank you, Councillor Kravitz. Um, just have a question, Mr. Perrin. The in section, it's table 14, 13.3, the recommended plan disposal. There's a disposal of a Stone Church Road culvert as in Ward 2. And I'm just wondering that disposal, that closing or the, the recommendation to dispose of that culvert, what is done in lieu of that in that area? Or is anything done? Just wondering what, what, what the idea was behind that. So um, the intent or what is being proposed by staff is that uh, that culvert uh, could be closed and access could be given from each end of the street. There's no uh, real technical need to have that culvert in place. It's a historical culvert when uh, the, you know, the, the former road uh, or access from Port Stanley was Stone Church Road prior to the construction of what was now or previously Highway 4, now uh, Sunset uh, Road. So uh, that that section could be uh, culvert removed and a cul-de-sac on the north end. And there's only one driveway that accesses on the north side of, uh, of that culvert off of, uh, off of uh, Stone Church Road in Sunset. Okay. okay. That, you know, my concern was that it was had something to do with the Union Pond and overflow of the Union Pond. But there'd be no bearing on the Union Pond in any way with that caller. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fair. Through you, Mayor. A couple of questions I have, if I might. Uh, the one I'm just wondering, uh, I notice, I know Councillor Kravitz asked about disposal, what that means. I'm just wondering, what does repurpose mean? Like on page 16 uh, in the schedule for repurposing, what does that actually mean? 
So what we're suggesting is that you don't have to dispose of that culvert. You wouldn't remove it. You leave it in place because currently that culvert serves as access across the pedestrian trail. Okay. Uh, for, further question, I'm just wondering, I know these are getting into maybe a little more detail than we should, but the one I just wondered about I, the valuations in there, does the Ontario ministry or government have some sort of a standards uh, or I'm, I'm just wondering how the valuations are of its current value or future replacement or if they have some sort of a schedule? So all the values that are in the report are in in today's dollars. So they're not meant to be inflated. So if you see, you know, a costing for replacement or a rehabilitation strategy in the report, that's in 2021 dollars. Uh, it's, it's not inflated to when it, you know, when the work gets done. The actual replacement cost or the value of the work is based on unit costs in 2021 to do the work. And, and as far as replacement goes, the replacement cost is based on today's dollars to replace that structure, you know, when it comes time to be replaced. The last question, and this one may be out of the, the realms of this uh, area, but I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, we're doing our asset management plan, and I'm hoping that over the future, we're going to be uh, qualifying for some capital assistance grants and so on. When you're doing the asset management plan, are you keeping in mind uh, having certain projects that if all of a sudden grants came up, we would be able to jump in and I know not shovel ready, but uh, something that would, there would be a sort of a wish list of when grants, if grants come up that we could uh, deal with it or is that premature at this point? Well, the practice of the municipality you know, historically has been that we try to have projects shovel ready that when, you know, grant money be does become available, um, we have projects that can go into the queue. So it's not, we want to suggest that we're going to do a project that's not on the list of, of uh, intended projects. We would just move a, a project up that's already been contemplated. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one other question. For culverts in particular, and I realize, well, first of all, it, it's a great report and I appreciate the work that has gone into it. And you always have to draw a line as to, you know, what to focus on and, and not to focus on necessarily. But the first culverts, it's anything three meters or greater. So what, what does the asset man management strategy have in place, if anything, for sort of the all other categories, whether it is culverts or some other um, asset? class or is it just something that will be managed somehow? Uh, no, uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Rowe. So bridges and culverts three meters or greater are captured under, under the Ontario Bridge Code. So um, historically, that's how we look at our bridge assets and, and Councillor Fair asked, you know, is there provincial guidance or regulation and the Ontario Bridge Code is that guidance and regulation? and uh, can, to be considered a large diameter culvert is three meters or greater. So that's what's captured by this detailed asset management plan. Anything less than three meters is still captured, but it's captured under the roadway. So mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of different ways that we can do it. We can go out and inventory every single culvert and there would literally be thousands of them uh, and come up with a replacement cost, or we can, do that based, uh, uh, itemize those replacement costs of those smaller diameter culverts within the road itself. That's how we're, we propose to deal with it. Okay, all right, very good, thank you. Deputy Mayor Marks. I, I think the, the exercise is, is pretty good, you know, like um, when you start examining all those, and I went and looked at that culvert and it's not necessary and I, I I think it'd be a hard time to for anyone to try to convince us that it is necessary. So, you know, by shutting it down in due course, uh, it makes sense. So, I, I think this exercise, uh, thanks, staff. It's you know, it's going to save us some money. That's certainly sharpening the pencil. Thank you. I think it, it's a mandatory thing that we have to do, and, and as Mr. Perrin said, he has to have it all done by. The end of July, I believe. So 
Um, I very much appreciate this report. It is very clear and very helpful for planning. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Kravitz. You wish oh, to no, ask. Oh no, no, I'm good. I, 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 thank you. That was I found the answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on this report? If not, would you read the motion, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, the motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Island receive report AMDS 2021 regarding detailed asset management plan, damp, bridges and culverts for information, and that Council approve the detailed asset management plan for bridges and culverts in May 10th, 2021. Thank you. Would you call the motion, please? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Okay, now the site plan application for 44400 Talbot Line. This was deferred. So um, Mr. Perrin has given his report, um, met on site, et cetera, and um, willing to um, approve it with the two conditions. Do we have any questions or concerns here? And I think he wants direction as well on, there is an option concerning the, uh, the fence. Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I am discouraged, I guess, for the amount of time that it's taken to get this far. And I was the one that motioned for the deferment from last council meeting. So I was really hoping this time around would be the full-fledged picture. However, if staff, and it does appear that staff is uh, recommending accepting this site condition with the, with, or this site report with site plan with the conditions that they've stated and the contract will require an actual diagram, um, then I would support that motion. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Councillor Wynn. Um, I just want to say I, I agree with everything Councillor Rowe said. I do was expecting to see more, um, but as long as staff is satisfied and um, conditions are met by the date, then um, I would be in agreement. Anyone else? Councillor Fair. Muted. muted. You're muted. You're muted, Bill. We can't okay. hear you. I'd like to note that uh, Mr. Neville has complied with four of the six conditions. The, the one as far as the fence, I mean, he replaced a fence that was there and we have to remember, we're, we're talking as if uh, someone in the past built a building on our municipal property, which is not the case. The reason that the building encroaches on municipal property is because Mr. Neville lost a lane when the ministry uh, widened that road, number three highway. It still says his address is number three. He doesn't have a lane there. He lost two lanes, one there and one on the side. And as far as the building, it's only encroaching on municipal property because the boundaries were changed when the, when the uh, road uh, was changed. And uh, in fact, you know, compliance would say that he can't even drive out of the route that uh, building out of, out of uh, his uh, overhead door because uh, eight and a half feet comes right to the middle of the door. So it, it's not that Mr. Neville has or, or whoever prior to that put a building up on municipal property. It's that municipal property changed the rules. So I think it's, it's quite reasonable for him to have that fence. And I have pictures and the fence is exactly in line with the front of the building. And it's exactly where the old one was. And uh, I mean, if, if, we're, if we're saying, oh, tear all that down, I mean, then the municipal, municipality could be in for some big money because that would require the building to be torn down too if we want to compensate on all that. I think he's gone as far as, as re a reasonable person could go. And I think with the moving the barriers, which are only there because he was trying to narrow his laneway, uh, he's complied with the rest. And I, I think uh, we should accept it the way it is. 
Bishop Pue wishes to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would just say that uh, the provisions put forward in Mr. Perrin's report uh, provide two options effectively to deal with the two outstanding items, move it to a contractual matter and, and would advance this matter forward. So um, really, I don't think staff have anything else to add to it. It's uh, either those items can be relocated or uh, the, the appropriate encroachment agreements uh, can be drafted, which deal with uh, those two requirements. So what we've tried to do is find compliance with council's site plan bylaw while also moving this matter forward to try to close it off. Thank you. Do you understand that, Mr. Fair? There could be an easement agreement signed concerning the encroachment. I didn't the, an encroachment agreement, sorry. Okay, I didn't really understand that. And, uh, but if that's the case, then, then uh, I'm fine with that because I know he has tried all kinds of ways to appease and I know he's done, he's done things, but he's, uh, or that property is captured by the change in the edges of the road due to changing for a turning lane on number three. So if that, if there's an encroachment agreement, that's gonna be acceptable and I, then I'm okay with that. Yeah, there were the two options, either he moved the fence or an encroachment agreement. I know, um, the, the building it predates uh, the uh, ownership by Central Elgin of the road there. So that's why the building is grandfathered in and doesn't, wouldn't have to be moved is my understanding. Mr. Perrin, maybe you can clarify that. Yeah, just, just to clarify, staff at, at no time have uh, suggested that the building has to be removed. And just to maybe give some you know, factual information about uh, the encroachment in, uh, in, in 1996, the previous owner to uh, the current owner actually applied for two lot severances to the north. Um, and as a condition of severance, Yarmouth Township at the time requested road widening. So it has nothing to do with MTO. It was a condition of severance uh, for, for a previous lot severance by the previous owner uh, to the property. So, um, you know, at that time, the, the, uh, the, the, the garage, even at that point encroached out onto the old road allowance from the plan of survey. Um, we're not suggesting the garage has to be moved. What we're suggesting is that's that the fence that's been constructed on the municipal property needs to be either relocated as per the, uh, the staff report or, uh, the landowner entering into an encroachment agreement. And that's based on past practice that uh, the municipality is utilized for encroachments onto its municipal property. So Mr. Councilor Perry, I'm assuming you're okay with? I, I am with that explanation that we're going to work and he's gonna have an encroachment agreement. The other one is the where the gravel is, and it, that was the only other one of the two I see that should be the gravel portion that is not going to be driveway any longer should be returned to um, like re uh, soil and reseeded. So that's the only other one that is required so that only the laneway is graveled. Mr. Farron? So maybe just to assist council with respect to process. Uh, the municipality's process is that the site plan control committee provides a report to council recommending approval of a site plan. Uh, and then the next step is the, the uh, proponent of the development needs to enter into a site plan agreement with the municipality, at which point that'll be brought back to council. Uh, typically in that site plan agreement, if there's works that needs to be done, uh, their security uh, requested, financial security, and that's taken to ensure that the work gets done in a timely manner. And those time constraints are laid out in the site plan agreement. And if it's not done, then the municipality is able to go in and do those works and re take the money from the security. So that's what staff are suggesting with that, that deficiency. And, and if he completed um, the grass thing, then the security money would be returned once all site plan things had agreed, been met. That's correct. Thank you. Councillor Fair? 
Well, we're sort of, we're changing here. First, we're saying, yeah, we're going to, we're going to be amicable and deal with them. And then the next thing we're saying, well, he's going to have to put up money and make deposits and otherwise we'll club him into submission almost financially. Uh, I, I want it to go on the way it is. And uh, I, you know, uh, any, anyway, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like he, he gets the money back. All he has to do is, is complete. If he's going to get the encroachment agreement, then that won't be something to complete. But the grass thing would be, and he would get his money back as soon as it was completed. Or the municipality, if they had to go in and complete it, it would come out of that deposit, that security deposit. Councilor Kravitz. Uh, basically, there's two conditions with this. One is the one's the fence, and I'm okay with that's the location of the fence and encroachment agreement. I 100% agree with that. It's in line with the building. It's not, there's a ditch there. It's not restricting the road access at this time. The grass area, that wasn't a stipulation made by the municipality. That was something the Ministry of Transportation requested. And for our site plan approval, we're just adhering to what the ministry asked. So I think that's something that's very simple. So I would be in agreement with the encroachment agreement with the fence in the stated location. And as far as the grass, I think that's just something we deal with it. And in any site plan agreement, there's a deposit that's required anyways. So, you know, if, if, if the owner fails to bring that little area to grass, then we have that all we're doing, we're approving the site plan and it's just going to be a grass area. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think we should just vote with this and carry on. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Councilor Fair. What kind of deposit are we talking for this little bit of grassed area? Be the cost to do the work, approximately $5,000. Any other questions? Is council all in agreement with doing the encroachment agreement for, for the road part or for the fence part? Because that's the only option. As, as Councillor Kravitz said, we don't have an option with the grass. That has to be done. So it's either done by Mr. Neville himself or done by the municipality. If he does it himself, then he gets his deposit back. Councillor Fair. Yes, I have to ask uh, how, how many rules are there going to be for putting this grass back? Is it a simple matter of putting grass back? I mean, 5,000 bucks does an awful lot of sod. It just seems that it's just another thing, another threat for them. Uh, I guess we have to give them some time, but uh, you know, I, I just just want it resolved. And you know, if, if we're just talking simple grass, but who knows how complex it could get after this again, which we don't want. We just want to get it resolved. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. So staff want to get it resolved as well, Councillor Fair. Uh, it's not. We're not going to keep throwing hoops up. Uh, that's not the intent. We've never done that through this process. Uh, it's not a matter of going out and throwing some grass seed down. The area has been dug out with gravel put in. So that gravel is going to have to be removed and topsoil brought in and seeded. So by the time you do that, you're going to have an excavator there or a, or a backhoe. You're going to have uh, a dump truck to get rid of the material, the gravel, and then bring in topsoil. So you know, we're not asking it to be sodded. We're, we're asking for that gravel to be removed and it restored back with topsoil so it will grow grass. Deputy Mayor Marks. Just to be clear to me, the, the encroachment agreement, that should be a fairly simple um, I, a form, I guess, that if both parties will agree to. That, that shouldn't be a uh, hard to get together. And as far like this grass versus gravel, that is a stipulation from MTO. Is that what I'm hearing? Through you, Madam Chair, uh, MTO required the entrance to be no more than five meters wide and back away from the intersection. So by having the, the gravel out there, it's just conducive to the blocks being moved and, and there's no control over an access at that point. You know, if, if that is their requirement, that, that's fine. You'll have to live with that. 
I have a hard time. What if it was concrete or pavement? Is it grass versus gravel? And I guess I'm kind of, you know, if that is a requirement, fine. I'd certainly encourage them to do it, get this behind them. But uh, I guess I'm a little confused on that. If that's their rule, I'll encourage them to do it. And I'll certainly vote for that way, but. Anyone else have any questions or concerns? Mrs. Wilson, do you have a motion that uh, corresponds? Thank you. If you would read the motion, please. Certainly. The motion reads moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Municipality of Central Algon receive report AMDS 2121 regarding site plan 44400 Talbot Line for information, and that Council approve the site plan for 44400 Talbot Line subject to the conditions outlined in report AMDS 2121. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Cook? Councillor Krevitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. We now come to bylaws. Uh, are we okay with taking them all together? There's nobody has any concern with taking one out. Uh, just number three, just so you know, the Police Services Board, we've been on a schedule so that it would end in June, um, but the new one has to be from January to the end of December. So they're just asking for a six month. This bylaw just gives the current um, Police Services Board a six, the next six months to, or to get them up to the same um, as all the other boards. And when the new format would start in January, this will just leave the same board in place until January. Councillor Kravitz, you had a concern? Yeah, just a concern over that police uh, services board. And when it did the breakdown for the various municipalities, only um, Central Elgin had to pay for co core security. And it's $11.20 per property. It's a or $9.54, it's $180,000, $181,000 cost for court services, so court security. And I'm just wondering why none of the other municipalities are responsible for this cost. We, we They are actually, uh, Councillor Kravitz, we bill them. I was very concerned with that when I got on police services and thought just because the court's in Central Elg and the county built it here, but they, they all, we bill the other municipalities and they pay us. They, I, I just want an explanation for that for anybody who does read this bylaw because it looks like we are paying the full amount. I just right. wanted to make it clear that other municipalities do pay for this as well. That's correct. Would you read the motion to take the bylaws together? Madam Mayor, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Krevitz, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that bylaws 2588, 2589, 2590, and 2591 be taken collectively. All the vote. Councillor Cook. <clears throat> Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Mayor Newton carries? Next motion. Next motion, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that bylaws 2588, 2589, 2590, and 2591 be read a first and a second time. Call the vote. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Okay, final motion. Final motion on the bylaws, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Krevitz, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that bylaws 2588, 2589, 2590, and 2591 be read a third time and finally passed. Call the vote. Councillor Cook. Yes. Councillor Krevitz. Yes. Councillor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. Councillor Wynn. Yes. 
Councillor Rowe. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have a resolution tonight uh, for, the Earth. for the Earth meeting. Um, I am quite willing to be, usually it's the mayor that is the voting one, and I believe then it would be logical that the deputy mayor should be the alternate. Heard me? It's just, staff was just waiting for the availability to, to insert those names. Okay, is that, was that suitable to council? Yes. Okay, so Diane is going to insert the names in the motion and then if, if, do you have a mover and seconder? I do. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Rowe. I just wanted to ask Deputy Mayor Marks if he was actually willing to have his name in that spot. Certainly. Okay, thank you. Okay, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Councillor Fair, that the Council of the Municipality of Central are going to approve Mayor Sally Mount Martin as the designated representative for the purposes of casting votes at the Earth Corporation Annual General Meeting of Shareholders, scheduled for Thursday, May the 27th, 2021, at 7 p.m. through Zoom software, and further that Council approve Deputy Mayor Marks as the alternate for said meeting. Call the vote. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. And all of you, I believe, are able to attend. You will all receive an invite, so you certainly can sit in on this Zoom meeting. I will say there's never as much discussion at Zoom meetings as there are at least the last one, the last annual meeting as there was when they're in person, but uh, yes, go ahead, Mrs. Wilson. Mayor Martin, through the rest of council, I do need to know who's actually attending. There is a sheet that I have to provide to Earth. So I do need to know the names of who wishes to their name to be submitted. Right, so that you can receive the invitation. Correct. So um, if you could just let, Right now, if you're, I know Deputy Mayor Marks and I will be attending. Is there other, are there others that would like to attend? Councillor Rowe, Councillor Kravitz. Thank you. That seems to be the only two. Yeah, it just, there is a deadline of May 17th. Thank you. Okay. So if you change your mind and want to be on, uh, you need to let Mrs. Wilson know by May 17th, if you want to sit in on the meeting. Thank you. We're at new business. Does anyone have any new business tonight? Councillor Wynn. Um, yes, I just wanted to um, let uh, really the community of Belmont know, but I guess anybody listening would be able to uh, take part. On May 29th of this year, the Belmont Lions Club will be having a recycled electronics and scrap metal drop off at our Belmont Arena from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, so we will be taking uh, televisions, computers, cellular devices, um, printers, basically anything electronic. Um, we will accept it if there are bigger items. Uh, there will can be curbside pickup but you need to uh, call first. I will give a phone number, 519-644-0824. You can call uh, Bruce Campbell and arrange for a curbside pickup of your item. Uh, scrap metal items would be pop cans, all other scrap metal you wanna get rid of, I suppose. So, um, just for people to make notes, start collecting your things aside in May 29th, Belmont Arena, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other new business or announcements they wish to make? Seeing none, would you read the motion to move into closed? Madam Mayor, the motion reads. Moved by Deputy Mayor Marks, seconded by Councilor Kravitz, that Council proceed into closed session at 8.27 p.m. in order to address a matter pertaining to closed session minutes and a position plan procedure criteria or instruction to, apply, to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf 
of the municipality or local board. Would you call the vote? Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Councillor Wynn? Councillor Wynn? Yes. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. If we had a moment to take us off live.